Hello, and welcome back. In this lesson, we'll take a look at the Terraform Configuration Language, or TCL. Now, we're going to be getting that foundational understanding of the configuration language syntax we'll be using to define our infrastructure through Terraform configuration files. Now, first, the Terraform configuration language is based on the HashiCorp configuration language, or HCL. Now, HCL is the low-level language that the Terraform constructs are built on, and the configuration language used in other HashiCorp products. The uh, Terraform configuration language, or TCL, is very similar to the HCL, but it offers some higher-level abstractions from HCL that make it a bit easier to read and use for the purposes of defining our infrastructure resources as this uh, configuration code syntax within Terraform. Now, I find that the uh, HCL and TCL terminology are used interchangeably in the context of Terraform, but I just wanted to call the differences here so that you're aware of them. Uh, for this course, we'll be technically looking at and working with the Terraform configuration language, or TCL. Now, as we go through and explain some of the TCL aspects, uh, there may be terms like resources, modules, and providers that I mentioned that uh, we haven't covered yet. I just felt that understanding the building blocks of the TCL was the logical learning step to take early on here. Um, just sort of a necessary step to take before really diving into providers, resources, modules, states, and uh, different aspects of Terraform. Now, if there are these terms that don't quite make sense at this point that uh, get mentioned in this lesson, uh, don't worry, I'll be covering the CLI, uh, providers, resources, and a whole bunch more in the upcoming lessons. But if you do have questions pop up in your head while you're watching this, uh, just make a quick note of them, uh, park them for a bit later to review, and I'm sure most of your questions will be answered later in the section of the course. And if not, we'll certainly cover it in a future section. Now, if you ever do get stuck on something or have a question you need to get answered, um, you know, from this lesson or any others as you go through the course, uh, I just want to remind you to join the Cloud Vikings tribe of students over at our Discord server. It's a great place to network with other students, uh, post your questions, and help other fellow students with the answers. Uh, I'll include an invite link in the uh, course player here, uh, or if you're watching this on a different platform, uh, you can find the invite link in the description below. So let's dive into the Terraform configuration language and see what makes it tick. Now, with Terraform, we're ultimately trying to deploy and manage a variety of infrastructure components and do all that through code. The TCL provides us the mechanism to do all this stuff. A Terraform configuration is basically a configuration document we create, which provides the instructions and information for Terraform to use to manage those infrastructure components. Now, the Terraform configuration syntax has a few simple parts we need to be aware of. Uh, first, we'll be taking a look at what are called blocks. Now, let's take a look at a simplified example here to help understand these blocks. So you can think of blocks as a type of container or box. On this box, we can have a number of labels on it that define what we can put in that box. Then within the box, we can provide a number of allowed items which are related to that box type. Now, Terraform has a few of these top-level block types we can use. I like to think of these as sort of the raw building materials we can use to build our Terraform configuration file. We can assemble all these different raw materials to make our Terraform configuration file that we're trying to build. Now to quickly run through this list of blocks, uh, first we have the Terraform block, a provider block, a resource block, input variable block, the local and output values blocks, uh, data block, module block, provisioner block, and dynamic block. Now we'll be working with most of these top level block types throughout the course. Uh, so there's no need to really get overwhelmed with this big list or try to memorize them at this point. I'll also include a lesson doing a quick summary of each of these block types as part of the section as well. But I wanted to quickly run through this block type list just to give you a general understanding of what's available. So to take a look at this further, here's a simplified Terraform configuration file. So essentially what we have here is a single block. Between the curly braces in the body of the block, we add the second important part of our Terraform TCL constructs, and those are arguments. So within the TCL, we have blocks and we have arguments. The arguments are added into the body of the block to further define that block object. So if blocks are raw building materials like uh, concrete, steel, wood, glass, that type of thing, the attributes are where we define the specifics of what we're trying to construct with these raw materials. So if we have a wood block type, maybe we want to define the species of wood we want to use. Then we have further arguments that define the size of the piece of wood we need, uh, what types of stain to use for the resulting color we want. So within the block body, we put in all these arguments, and the arguments have an identifier 
and an expression associated to it. Now, these argument identifiers or expressions can be simple literal values like this, or they can reference and combine values from other expressions and variables. So for an argument, the first identifier part before the equal sign is the argument name. Then after the equal sign, we have the argument's expression value. A simple way of looking at these attributes is like a key value pair. With the Terraform configuration language though, the value part, the expression, can do a lot more than just represent a text string or a numerical value. All right, so given what we know so far, I wanted to take a look at another Terraform configuration example that uh, comes from the Terraform documentation page. I want to use this as a review to see if we can actually identify all the different configuration parts. Now, maybe pause here and see if you can figure out all the parts of this example. Uh, there's a bit of a tricky part that I kind of hinted at earlier, but we haven't exactly covered quite yet. Uh, but pause here for a minute and see what you can figure out on your own. Now for those that actually paused the video and tried to identify all the parts on your own, great job. Uh, we'll go through and review those now. Uh, for those that didn't, we'll still review them anyways. So let's take a look. First, we can see the block type, which is a resource block in this example. Then the resource block type has two labels, AWS underscore instance and example. Now, depending on the block type, there may be a different number of labels that are required. Uh, some blocks might need two or three labels. Uh, some don't need any at all, which we'll get into in just a second. So for this resource block, we have our opening curly brace. And then at the very bottom here, we have our closing curly brace. And this defines the start and end of the block section. Between those braces are the block body. Now, in this example, what's going on in this resource block body here? Well, we can see we have an argument here. And recall from earlier that before the equal sign is an identifier, which is the argument name in this case. For this example, we have the argument name of AMI, uh, which is just short for uh, Amazon Machine Image. Now, after the equal sign, we have an expression representing that argument's value, the value of ABC123. Now, this should look pretty straightforward from the examples we saw before, but what's actually happening below this argument? We have this stuff still between our resource block braces, uh, so we know it's in the body section of this block, but it doesn't quite look like anything we've seen before with the other arguments. Well, this is actually just another block, a nested block. So we have a block within a block. In this case, we have our top-level Terraform resource block of AWS underscore instance, and then within that resource block, there's a nested child block of network interface. As we work through more examples later in the course, we'll often find these nested blocks for different resources. Now, this example here isn't fully configured, uh, but to put some context to what would happen for this example use case here is we're essentially defining an AWS EC2 instance resource that we want to create. And this EC2 instance resource would be based off the Amazon machine image or AMI ID of uh, ABC123. But maybe in our case, we wanted the EC2 instance to use a specific network interface when it gets created. Now, this AWS instance resource allows us to create these additional nested network interface blocks as an attribute. The example here doesn't quite show all the details, but within the body of the network interface block, you could specify the network interface ID you want to attach to the EC2 instance when it's created, uh, along with other configuration attributes for that network interface. As another example, we may want to define a specific storage configuration for the EBS volume for the instance. So we could have yet another block under the parent AWS instance resource block that provides the configuration attributes for the block storage device. Now, if you're not familiar with AWS and uh, what we're talking about here with these EC2 instance components, uh, it's not really important at this point. I just wanted to provide some more context to these nested blocks that we're uh, taking a look at in this example. The important thing is just that we understand that within the top level block types, you can have multiple nested blocks, each of which can define a variety of attributes for that parent resource type. Now, I know this can be a little bit confusing, and you may be wondering why some resources even use these nested blocks. So let's rework our sort of wood and table example that we were talking about earlier. So instead of the wood resource example we had earlier, uh, let's take that idea and make it a bit more terraformy, which I'm pretty sure is a word. So with Terraform, our goal is basically to provision infrastructure resources. 
So let's say instead we wanted to create a furniture resource. Maybe this resource can allow us to create uh, tables, chairs, desks, and all kinds of furniture items. So we set up our Terraform configuration to use a top-level resource block type called furniture. Then it uses one label that we can tell it what type of furniture we want, uh, like table or desk or chair. So we want a table in our case, so we have that table label provided to the resource block. Now within the body of this table resource block, we have an argument that defines the type of table we want. Do we want uh, an end table, a bar table, or maybe a dining room table? In this case, we want a dining table, so that's what we define as part of the argument value expression after the equal sign. Now our table needs a top and some legs. Some people may want a oak table top, uh, some want a maple table top. And of course, there's the different sizes of the table that we need to define, and uh, even the wood stain we want. Now the table top is a related part to the top level table furniture resource. Don't forget that these nested block sections that are in the body of the block uh, are related to that higher level parent block. Then below we may want a second block called legs. The leg parts have their own different attributes, uh, so those get defined in this legs block. Now this is kind of a silly example here, but I hope it illustrates how the top-level blocks and nested blocks sort of come together to help define a given resource. Now even with our simple table example here, we can see the configuration power of these resource blocks. We have a single furniture resource that we can use, and then based off the labels, blocks, and attributes we use, we could create almost endless number of furniture configurations from that single resource. Now switching back to the AWS instance example, there's thousands of variations possible for creating an EC2 instance. The single AWS underscore instance resource provides us a well-defined way to specify all the different configuration details we need for that instance uh, and provide that as code. The Terraform configuration language helps simplify how to define all this configuration complexity into these three main elements of blocks, arguments, and expressions. Now, one last thing I want to call out while we're looking at this furniture example is that the Terraform configuration language is declarative. If you're not sure exactly what that means, uh, please refer back to the earlier terminology lesson in the previous section of the course. Now, as the TCL is declarative, the order of how we define our blocks in the configuration generally don't matter. So if we had the legs block before the tabletop block, Terraform is smart enough to know how the table should be assembled. When this furniture resource is created, the resulting table would have the legs where they belong, regardless of the order of where we put that block. Now we'll see this in later lessons in the course when we get into more complex environments with multiple resources. Terraform can generally figure out all the necessary sequential resource provisioning steps that need to take place, so we don't really have to worry about all the complex dependency meshes of what order things need to go in. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and have a good understanding now of the Terraform configuration language syntax. Don't forget to take those breaks between these lessons. Uh, you want to keep your brain fresh as we power through all these foundational lessons here. So go grab a coffee, go for a walk, uh, do a quick stretch, just get away from the screen for a bit, and we'll see you in the next lesson.